my name is John Cordy and uh, in our house our bathroom and toilet are actually separate which is, is kind of handy uh, so you know you can use the toilet while someone else is using the bathroom without the awkwardness obviously today's Monday and I wanted to talk to you about um, a, a hybrid picking exercise that I sort of talked about on Saturday that I've been working on um, hybrid picking is not something that I use massively in my lead playing except for if I'm doing chord melody stuff um, but it's something I've been working on because I've seen some people like Jonathan Kreisberg, Tom Quayle, David Beebe, Thomas Griggs doing good stuff with hybrid picking I thought well that's something that can't hurt to to sort of introduce into my playing a little bit so this exercise is based on that kind of idea and trying to work on kind of the mechanics of getting used to hybrid picking so I'll get the guitar so first of all I just wanted to start with some kind of general advice on practicing um, I know some people might tell you to practice everything with like a clean tone so if you're playing legato or alternate picking or practicing any aspect some people have said you know you should practice with a clean tone I'm not of that belief I think you should practice with the context that you're going to play the thing so if you want a, a line to sound good um, when you play it with distortion or overdrive or a lead tone you probably need to practice it with that lead tone as well that said it doesn't hurt to practice stuff with a clean tone um, it's just something I think you should work on once you play with overdrive and stuff you'll find that things that weren't obvious that were happening with a clean tone you know maybe muting or things like that start to jump out a bit more as things are a bit more compressed and you can then start to notice that perhaps if you weren't muting the bottom strings or some aspect like that that it becomes more obvious when you try to play this stuff with an overdriven or a lead tone um, so that's just a, a quick thought but so the lick that I've been working on we'll start off with just one one part of it just checking you can see my hand so we've got this uh, a C major 9 I think arpeggio so we've got C G F sharp D F sharp I guess it's worth saying now that the tabs for all of my videos and stuff uh, are on Patreon which I think is something like three dollars a month if you're into the stuff that I do um, and all the backing tracks that I put together go on there as well uh, it's not a hard sell or anything but I just thought if you're into my playing that's maybe the best place to kind of get all of the tabs and stuff for, for what I do um, uh, hopefully it's kind of good value or whatever I don't want to rip anyone off but you know you get all of my backing tracks that you want and so I guess it's kind of hopefully good value anyway so that's where the tab for this will be but what I'm doing is every other note so I'm doing a downstroke but where you would normally in alternate picking would have an upstroke I'm using my middle finger and what that effectively means is that my right hand is having to do a bit less so I could play that alternate pick In fact I think that would be a definitely a good thing to practice so all of this stuff practice both ways potentially but if I do too much of this this right hand and wrist gets a bit tired whereas um, comparatively with the hybrid picking I'm using it feels like quite a lot less energy and I feel like I could do that for longer than I could alternate pick it. 
So that's potentially the reason why you might want to look into hybrid picking. And I think also the fact that those mechanics show that I can do that for longer with you know more stamina. I'm going to imagine that at some point that might translate to speed as well. But I'm quite new to their technique at the moment so it's not like I can just blast through this stuff and, and make it sound good. It's something that I'm working on the mechanics for so hopefully I guess I'll be able to show you the things that I'm working on as I go and maybe you'll be able to get something useful out of it. So here's the little kind of exercise that I've put together. So we start off with this. So we start off with a this C major 9. And then we jump to the next string set and we're playing a similar sort of thing but starting with an E flat. fill at the end which I think you can play with pretty much whatever technique you like so Super slowly. Um, so that's what I'm working on right now and um, hopefully you can hear that's got some potential. Another thing that you could do extended version of what I've been practicing uh, I add the C so the exercise starting from the C starting from the E flat then from an F sharp then down to a D flat and then back That's what I'm thinking is quite a fun one to work on and also I think sounds kind of like music. You could also use it as an alternate picking exercise. And I think it might have benefits for that as well because picking across strings is kind of super helpful for basically practicing all of the mechanics of alternate picking. But experiment with that. That's my, my journey that I'm on right now. Um, so I'm picking up strokes basically with the middle finger quite a lot of the time. <laughs> So yeah, hopefully that's a fun one. Um, on Patreon you'll find the tabs for this and um, the fingering and stuff. Um, it's important to start this nice and slow. And 
work on building um, kind of fluency and the feeling of what it should feel like when you play it correctly um, before you build up speed. Um, but yeah, if you find this kind of helpful, um, Patreon's a good place to support me, or you could use the buy me a coffee link. Um, that helps to keep things ticking along here. Um, also, I guess you could consider using my Helix or Podgo or FM3 patches, um, but all those things would help. And even if you can't support me financially, um, liking and supporting also helps a lot. But uh, let me know how you get on with this exercise. Leave some comments below if you've got kind of tips or other ideas, um, or if you like this lesson and want me to do a few more of them. Um, and also, if you film yourself playing this and tag me in it on Instagram, I'll repost that to my story if that's the sort of thing that you want to happen. Um, but yeah, thank you for stopping by, and I'll catch you for another video soon.